if I can get everybody to tiptoe quietly back to your seat. When they created the, the word edge, educators dedicated to growing excellence, that's exactly what they're giving these kids. And they are benefiting, the parents are happy, the staff is happy, and we are just great to be a great cause for these students and changing them and building them so that they can have a future where they can imagine things that they've never even imagined before. At Edge, teachers are the most dedicated people on the face of the earth. I've been here at 8 o'clock at night and teachers are still working. Students are going through a great transformation where they're taking responsibility for their own learning. Parents are forming relationships with the school and learning to trust the school for their child's learning needs. The community is seeing that these schools are important to all of us and we are willing to invest in their success. We saw that we needed a major transformation and one of the issues was Tier 1 instruction. These students come in and they have such high needs. How can we be sure that we address the whole child and that we address their needs as completely and as quickly as possible? And that was the impetus for EDGE, to completely transform these schools that had been two years in a row improvement required rated by the state and had struggled historically over a decade up and down with student performance. So something major was needed and our board and uh, district brought forth a major change. So you start from the origin uh -huh. and you go to the market. Mm -hmm. like, I think is he correct guys? Yes. yes he is. This last year was not so good but this year it has turned into like just something came alive and just helped the whole school and now it's like we're just having a bunch of fun. We have our practice makes perfect board. It's where we pull some sheets out and we'll work on them to get our fluency better and our current work. The minute the students and parents came into the building, they knew things were different. Difference in how classrooms were set up a difference in the experience level of the teachers, a difference in the way the schools were organized, the instructional materials, the hallways. Everything looked different. The district had done some major renovations with flooring, paint, all kinds of improvements in the facilities in addition to restaffing both schools from the staff standpoint and the administration. Anything that meets the needs of our students is what happens on a daily basis. For example, as you go throughout our campus on today, you'll see flexible grouping, and that's not just a small group inside of a classroom. That's what you'll do in your traditional classroom setting. Okay, flexible group time, let's go. Flexible group time, flexible group time, Mr. Mouton. Flexible group, please. Thank you, thank you. Make sure everyone is out. I'll be right with you. We'll take three or four students from each one of those classes and make a group. And when we see that someone is progressing further than what we're doing, we'll switch them out and we'll grab someone else. So it's no longer class A, B, and C. It's a, it's a bouquet of flowers instead of just one flower, as you could say. But our parents are really happy with the parental feedback. We have a parent contact system called Remind where it's set up to our cell phones and we can just send out a quick text message or send a picture of an assignment and send it out. So it's that constant contact with the parents and they say, wow, I really appreciate that. Sometimes I can't get to a computer. I'm seeing from the students, for example, I have one paper that I kept from September that said, I can't do this with a sad face on it. And then now when that student is turning in their reports and making B work from an F student, that excites me. I have a mom that says, wow, you really called just to say that you like my son and he's doing a great job? I said, 
Yes, ma'am. That's really the extent of my conversation. She said, you don't have anything bad to tell me? I said, I, actually, no. I just wanted to call and say that I'm enjoying your child and we're having a great school year. So just even the parents enjoying our positive interaction and doing things the way we call it, we do it, the edge way. Edge Campus, it's been wonderful. I, I really enjoyed it. It's helped a lot um, with my fifth grader. Uh, it's helped him uh, develop his social skills. He's a lot more um, open now. He participates a lot more in a lot of clubs in the school. Uh, with my third grader, academically. She's a social butterfly, so she didn't need any of that. Mm -hmm. But um, academically, uh, she's a straight-A student right now. Mm -hmm. So I know they love it. So if they're happy, I'm happy. Yes, um, a tremendous change. Like, we started in August, and when you see the growth and the confidence and the excitement in kids when they're learning now, you just... You're just elated and you're like, wow, you know, they're they're more confident, they're raising their hands, they're shouting out answers, they're they're ready to show their work and prove and defend their answers. So um, reading fluency has truly improved. So the confidence is the major thing we've noticed in our students. They're they're more apt and prepared and and ready to be successful. The attendance rate of the students has increased. The attendance rate of the teachers has increased. Discipline is decreasing. We are seeing from our checkpoint, students are learning. And, uh, and it's at a rate that we did not see previously at these schools. If you've never missed a day of school, and you've like never been tardy, your name will go on here, but at the end of each year, they'll take the stars down, and you'll get a prize because you've like never missed a day of school, you've never been late. And then it's like you have first grade that like been doing pretty good, then you have fourth grade, like my name's on here, right here. My name has always been on here. The flags are put on each teacher's door uh, for perfect attendance. They look forward to hearing at the end of the day their class has perfect attendance. The more they're here, the better off we can teach them. At Briargate uh, last year, the teacher attendance was 92.3%. And currently, teacher attendance at Briargate is 96.6%. That's a good increase. At Ridgemont, currently it's 99.6%. That means there is rarely a teacher absent. Frontal, temporal, parietal, occipital, cerebellum, brain, stem, walking, rotate. Well, action-based learning is an instructional strategy based on brain research that supports movement, the link between movement and academic performance. So my job is to bring kids in, talk with their teachers, find out what content needs extra reinforcement, and then apply my knowledge with movement to the academic content so they can anchor that learning in their brain. So you're step cross, step cross, step cross. The Action-Based Learning Lab, or ABL Lab, is an area inside the building where the PE teacher can work with students and we, what we found is that this helps them stay engaged. For a long time, schools didn't want to have additional recess or didn't want students to be outside the classroom playing because it was a loss of instructional time. But what we found was that when students are having difficulty learning, and some students don't have an opportunity to play or a place to play at home, when they come to school, they need a place to work their energy off and a place to be a child. And we found that in the action-based learning lab, they can learn while they're having movement and working off some of that energy, which I think really does help with the disciplinary referrals and the attention and engagement in the classroom. When students are successful in learning and they're engaged in the classroom, the behavior is better. Edge is making a difference. The teachers, the new staff at the school is making a difference. For example, at Ridgemont Elementary, last year we had 71 out-of-school suspensions. 
Right now, mid-year at midterm, that number was only 10. At Briargate, we had 35 suspensions. That's a high number for a school that has just over 400 students. This year, that number is five out-of-school suspensions. While we don't have star data to track our students' progress, we do feel that they are becoming more academically prepared and successful. As a district, we give checkpoints. These are shorter assessments based on the curriculum that's been taught within a window of time. What we see is that when the district improved, so do these students. And there has been some marked improvement. When we look at both Briargate and Ridgemont, their percent of accuracy is from 50 to 60 percent accurate. Massachusetts, let's say it, Massachusetts. The one thing that I see as challenges is that there are some socioeconomic factors that are present at this school that are none other like I've seen at any other school. For example, there are children here who are truly hungry. When children ask me for things, it's, Miss, do you have a piece of candy? Miss, do you have a sandwich? Miss, would you save me some of your lunch? And although I've always worked at Title I schools, I've never seen the level of need as high as I've seen it here. The teacher retention rate at Briargate for the last two years, it was 61% and 75%. We could only anticipate that if you lose 25% of your staff every year and you have to retrain and start over again, that makes it very difficult for teachers to form these professional learning communities, to really know the students, their families, and to have continuity once you do have success going. So teacher retention will be very critical to the success of EDGE. Could have a waiver on the extended day fees for children who are of age in the district. That would be a big incentive to stay because most of our concern is we give the eight hours, the 10 hours to other people's children, and then our children sort of get a shortcut. But to know that they're in the building with us, that would be a big incentive that would say, oh, you know what, I'm not going to the transfer fair, I'm staying right here at Briargate. One of the things that we have to support families and students is Club Edge. And I would have to say this is probably one of the areas where we need to improve. We're not certain that our families are that interested. We only have 18 students at one school and 10 enrolled at the other. Because many of our families walk through the neighborhood to pick up their children and then walk home and they have dinner early and that's their family time. What I would like to see is it's expand more equipment like that in the classrooms, more wobble stools in the classrooms, more exercise balls in the classrooms, more of those type of kinesthetic or movement desks. So in the future, we know that the professional development and training needs to take place before school or as we were discussing with the principals the other day, don't bother the teachers the first nine weeks. Let them teach. Let the school jail. Hi, Jeff. This is my son, Jeffrey. He's in first grade here at Briargate, and this is one of my incentives on staying here. The future at EDGE is bright. We are making a difference. Students are learning more. Their attendance is increasing. They are excited and so are we. I want them to know that this is not the same Ridgemont. This is actually a school who they should be looking out for in the coming years. I think that if they continue with the high quality teachers, they continue offering the activities that they are to motivate and encourage the students to move forward, I think that Ridgemont is going to be one to contend with in a few years to come. So. Watch out, FBISD. <laughs>